Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitert here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who was referred by a colleague uh, based in Norwich and they attended yesterday. Um, so for those of you who don't know the geography of the UK, Norwich is on the east coast uh, or east of England and where I am in Leicester, it's in the Midlands. It's about a two and a half hour drive each way. And they saw a colleague of mine uh, in the morning and uh, my colleague advised them to visit myself because it was a bit of a complex case. Um, they actually had bilateral block tears, but uh, you're going to all hate me, but I accidentally deleted the left one. Um, now, the left ear was exactly the kind of the same, but the mirror image of this side. But um, yeah, uh, I'm really um, not happy with myself for that. But you'll get a, a good flavour of what's going on here. So this patient uh, is suffering from superficial otitis externa. So otitis externa is an umbrella term given to an infection or inflammation of the outer ear. And um, there's different types of otitis externa. This is more superficial, so it's the epidermis layer of skin that's affected. Um, now, on the outside of the ear, in the, in the bowl of the, the external ear, we call that the cavern concha, the patient has some psoriasis, and they had quite severe psoriasis on their scalp. So um, psoriasis is an autoimmune condition that affects uh, the dermis layer of skin, which is the, the middle layer, and it leads to increased um, cell proliferation, which basically means um, an increased rate of cell um, skin cell production, which then also causes more skin cells to die. And all this dead skin is collecting within the ear, and it's also impacted on the eardrum, and it's become a bit crusted here. So it may not be um, completely obvious by when we're in the ear, but this patient's ear canal is quite narrow and quite bendy, and that's what my co colleague found a bit difficult to navigate. Um, and my colleague uh, contacted me this morning, actually, to say... Uh, how I felt the procedure was, whether they did the right thing. They were a bit worried that it wasn't a complex case. Um, but no, it was quite a tricky case. Um, um, it was So I can understand why um, my colleague did struggle. So I just reassured them that it was fine. And no, I totally understand why they referred it. So it wasn't a wasted referral. And uh, a colleague was happy to hear that. Um, they're currently using a different system, um, which they're not very... Uh, overly pleased with so um, they're looking to get trained by Clearwax when we restart our training courses which is not going to be too long now because we're making very good progress with all um, the, the development and the launch of the wax scope and my other instruments so um, it's all going to plan and so I'm going to update everyone shortly with some hopefully training dates so when you've got skin like this you get some parts of the skin that's quite mushy the patient had been using um, hydrogen peroxide drops, urea hydrogen peroxide drops. And so that's a non-water-based hydrogen peroxide. Um, so what the urea does, it, it, it kind of, um, it's believed to be a keratinolite, I'm trying to think of the word, because um, it's just, my mind's gone blank there, but it's got keratolytic function, which basically means it, uh, urea is designed to help break down keratin, which is the protein found in the skin cells. And hydrogen peroxide, when that enters the ear, it reacts with an enzyme called perioxidase, which is secreted by the cerimonious glands. And that transforms hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And you, in that transformation process, uh, we get effervescence, so a bubbling, uh, a kind of a, a foaming um, action uh, which is designed to help break up the, the dead skin cells as well um, and what I find uh, a bit of a negative with hydrogen peroxide drops well there's several things hydrogen peroxide drops is slightly alkaline uh, the natural pH of our ears should be slightly acidic um, so it can change the pH level it can increase the pH level of the ear making it more susceptible to bacterial fungi infections it also causes any wax or skin to become very mushy, uh, which is, makes it harder to, to then suction. Um, and I also find that it can irritate the outer epidermis layer of skin because 
uh, when it tra- when that mechanical foaming also can cause a bit of trauma to micro trauma should I say to the epidermis layer of skin uh, which is still attached um, to the canal wall and because it it liberates into water as well the water gets absorbed by skin cells skin scales are naturally hydrophilic and it absorbs it and it causes the skin cells to overhydrate and swell and burst um, and uh, so it leads to a maceration of the skin so cleaned up both ears i'm just mopping up around the head but now you probably get a more of an appreciation now of how bendy this patient's ear canal is you can see the eardrum it veers off to the right in fact the anterior aspects of the front part of the ear is not even visible on screen because it curls um, around there and so i'm having to stretch the ear open so that's just a still image of the eardrum so um, the ear is nice and healthy so written to their gp you can see a bit of um scabs there on the um simba concha region because the patient scratches their ears well i hope you enjoyed that video guys take care keep well and speak soon bye